Welcome back to Science Wednesday. Um, so we know a little bit of, about Corona, what it is, uh, what we have to uh, do when we get sick. What we already know. Vaccines prevent people from getting sick. Antiviral therapy and medicines cure infected people. Both the spike protein for the vaccine and the antibodies are made out of proteins. These proteins can be made in a lab by injecting the DNA that codes for a protein into a mammal cell, a yeast cell or a bacterial cell. These cells will then produce proteins. Mm -hmm. But actually we don't really want to get sick, no? No, we don't. So the, the most important thing is actually to prevent getting sick. So how do we do this? So the first and most important thing is to wash our hands. So why don't we go and see a little bit of why this is actually important and why this works. This is a coronavirus. The coronavirus has a cover of fats. This is a soap molecule. A soap molecule exists out of two parts. The tail that binds with fats and the head that binds with water. As the cover of corona exists out of fats, the tail of the soap will bind to the fat. The heads of the soap will bind to the water that we use when we're washing our hands. The water pulls the soap and the cover of the virus breaks. The inside of the virus dissolves and washes away with the water. Well, another very important measure is the social distancing. The social distancing. Exactly. But what? Well, um, as we said before, the, the virus is transmitted through droplets. Mm -hmm. So if I sneeze, the droplets from my sneeze will go a certain distance, but they will not stay in the air forever. They will go, go down to the ground. So if you keep d enough distance, my sneeze will not reach you. And also, as we saw before, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you remember the contagious rate? A little bit. Okay, so the contagious rate means how many people on average, someone who's sick, will infect. Um, and it depends, among other things, on the contact rate. So the, the amount of contact you have with other people. So if you have less contact with other people, you'll also be less likely to spread the disease because you don't see that many people. Why don't we now see maybe some simulations to better understand how this all actually works? I think that's a great idea. The blue dots are healthy people, the orange dots are sick people, and the purple dots are people that recovered and are now immune. In these simplified simulations, no one dies. Now let's see how a disease spreads in a population where everybody is doing business as usual. You can see that the spread starts slow, then goes up very quickly, and then goes down again when there's more and more people that are recovered and immune. Now let's look at a simulation where they tried to isolate the sick people from the healthy people. It is very difficult to completely isolate the sick from the healthy. When there's even a small gap in the isolation, the disease will spread very quickly in the rest of the population. Now let's look at the simulation where only a quarter of the population moves. You can clearly see that the spread of the disease goes much slower than before. This is what we try to do with social distancing. Now let's have a look at the situation where only one eighth of the population moves. You can see that the spread of the virus has slowed down a lot and that the curve is much flatter than before. So, we have seen that um, to get out of this pandemic, mm -hmm. people are working on medicines, people are also working on vaccines mm -hmm. to make us immune to the disease. 
but you do, you can also get immune not through a vaccine but by getting the disease. Yeah. Uh, and a word that I heard a lot lately is herd immunity. But what is this exactly? So herd immunity is a concept that uh, is related to the immunity of a whole group of people. Mm -hmm. So in, if in this group of people there is a big amount of them that are immune, that is supposed to be around 70%, then their immunity covers the other people as well. So by this 70% of the people being immune, they are preventing an outbreak of the disease among the other 30%. I think it's a little bit of a complicated concept to see, so why don't we have a look at some simulations? I think that would be helpful. In this simulation the red figures are sick, the white figures are healthy and the grey figures are immune. We can see that in the beginning the amount of sick people goes up very quickly, but that after a while it stays stable because there's so many people immune to the disease that they kind of protect the people that are still sensitive to the disease. This is because if a sick person is surrounded by people who are immune to the disease, it cannot spread the disease anymore. So let's have a look at what we learned today. What did we learn today? Measures to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Washing hands, the soap destroys the cover of the virus and in this way deactivates the virus. Social distancing, a lower contact rate will result in a slower spread and a flatter curve. So, that was it for today. And not just for today. Yeah, exactly. And in general. This so was the last class of this um, cycle. cycle. We hope you enjoyed. We hope you learned a lot. And we hope to see you at some point. In the future. Thanks for joining us. And uh, uh, bye. Bye bye.